Hello everyone and welcome to The Breakdown and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to set up WooCommerce to build an e-commerce store on WordPress. Now before we jump on into this video, I do want to remind you that it is brought to you by Bluehost. You can check out the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Bluehost to get an awesome WordPress site with a free domain, free SSL, all of that awesome stuff. I host all of my sites on Bluehost, everything from the sites that get 70,000 hits a month to those that get nearly nothing. Everything is on Bluehost and I absolutely love it. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and jump on into the video. First and foremost, we need to download and install WooCommerce to do that just go to plugins over here on WordPress and add a new plugin and we're just gonna when we get on that page search WooCommerce WooCommerce there we go and it should pop up right here yep there it is so WooCommerce click install now and you gotta then activate it and I'm actually gonna go through the setup process and try to explain things the best I can but know this I learn stuff about WooCommerce every single day and while I might know more than a lot of people there are a ton of people who know more than me about it so once once you've got WooCommerce installed, there's a few things we need to check. First and foremost, go to your domain. So whatever your domain is, in this case it's nixgames.com, and then you can do slash cart, C-A-R-T, just like that, to make sure your cart page is working. It should be. As you can see, mine is working, and I had previously made this tutorial, and I actually remembered I had added a product to the cart. Now, for WooCommerce, let's come over here to where it says WooCommerce, and then we're going to scroll down to where it says Settings. Now, obviously, you can add coupons there. That is self-explanatory, but we want to go to Settings. Once we're in Settings, this is where all of your original setup for WooCommerce is done, right? So, as you can see, I've kind of went through here and already done this before but you've got your address now this is where your shipping rates are going to be located as well as local taxes for this area and things of that nature are going to be taken i've got my office address in here you can select where you want to sell if you want to sell to all countries if you want to sell to all countries except for or if you want to sell specifically to let's say the united states you can do that there as well shipping locations you can ship to all countries you sell to or you can ship to all countries period, or you can only ship to specific countries, say the United States. That way, someone in the United States can only buy your product, and you're only going to ship it to people in the United States, which isn't too uncommon, depending on where your distribution is. Now, if you want taxes, you can enable tax calculations. It will automatically do that based on where the user is buying from. It can't be a bad thing unless you already are building tax into your price, like I do on all my stores. In that case, leave that unchecked. For currency, I'm going to be in US dollar. You might be in something else, like Venetu Vatu. I don't know what that is, but whatever your currency is, click on that. Currency position, you're going to do that left. That's where the dollar sign is going to be, right? And USD, that's on the left. In other currencies, it can be on the right. So select it as whatever currency you're going to do there. Comma separator, I'm going to use the comma for that, period, for the decimal separator and how many decimals you want to. You can then click save changes and we'll move on to the next page. On the next page here, which is going to be products, we're going to be able to go over and actually identify our shop page right there, which is what we want. We want it to be shop and then our add to cart behavior. So do you want someone to redirect to the cart page after a successful addition? What that means if somebody goes to your product, clicks add to cart, it immediately takes them to the cart page. If you want them to keep browsing, if you're trying to upsell them on something, you won't want to do this. Enable add to cart button on archives, right? If we come over here, that is what we're talking about, right? That's the add to cart button on the archives. For weight unit, you can do ounces, you can do pounds. It really doesn't matter whatever makes the most sense for you. Inches or feet or centimeters, whatever you're wanting to do right there, you can do. And then reviews. I would recommend always enabling reviews as well as show verified reviews. That way when someone actually has bought your product and comes reviews it, you'll be able to show that as verified. Reviews can only be left by verified owners. That's probably a good idea, but you can uncheck it if you want, whatever you want to do. Enable star rating on reviews. That is something I would suggest. And star ratings should be required, not optional, meaning someone has to get a star rating is also something I would recommend. Now, if we save this, instead of going up here to the top to the next category, there are actually subcategories here in products, one of which is inventory. As you can see right here, it is. It's this little bitty part right here. Now, if you want WooCommerce to manage stock, meaning manage your inventory, you want to enable stock management right here. You can then go through and see how long it holds something in a cart, right? So if you were to add something to a cart on a store, how long is it going to hold that before it puts it back out for general public to buy again? I would recommend if WooCommerce is managing your stock to enable low stock notifications and out of stock notifications. That way you can stay on top of that, where you want those notifications sent, when it will send you the low stock email, as well as when it will send you the out of stock email, and whether you want to hide out of stock, stock items in your catalog and on your store or not. You can also select when and if you want uh, the quantity of the stock remaining 
remaining, how many products you have left to be displayed. I think this is a good idea, especially if it gets low, it can help provide urgency of a purchase. Save changes there, and then I'll meet you in downloadable products. Now, if you've got a downloadable product, meaning a digital product here, like an ebook or something like that, this can help you out a ton. So whether you want to force download, which means whether you want it to download immediately after they purchase, whether you want it to redirect to the place they can download it. And I'll be honest, I don't really know what Excel redirect Xsend file is. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know everything about WooCommerce, and that's something I don't know. Typically, force downloads, I think, is probably going to be the best method. That way, they instantly get it, but the choice is you. Redirect's not a bad option either. Now, downloads require a login. Do you want somebody to have to set up an account and come back and use that account to log in to be able to get their download, or can they just get it via the email link or whatever? Um, typically, when I sell online products, I don't require a download login, but that choice is up to you. And then grant access to downloaded products after payment and that means as soon as they purchase and enter their payment, even if it's not processed, they get it, or do they have to wait until the payment is completed and processed by you? That is up to you. I would recommend doing it automatically because people with digital product kind of expect that. I will then now see you guys in the shipping tab. Now, the shipping tab is a little interesting here. You can add shipping zones. Right now, as you can see, I've got one added for the United States already, and since this store, as we set up earlier, is only selling in the United States, that's the only one I need. Now, I as you can see, I have free shipping, and that's what I would recommend 99% of the time. If you can do it, build that shipping into your cost and do free shipping. I don't like paying for shipping. I'm sure you don't, and most people do not. However, you can also go in here and do flat rate shipping and charge a certain amount for every time you ship a product, right? So how much is the cost and all of that stuff for your flat rate shipping, whether or not that's going to be taxed, all of that stuff. So you can go in there and set that up, but I'm just going to leave it free shipping. Everything you can do, make sure it's free shipping. Now, say right here with this uh, ship shipping zones, if you wanted to add in, say, Africa, you can do that very easily, and you would need to adjust that accordingly. So, pretty simple and easy stuff. After we've done that, we can move over here to shipping options. Now, shipping options is going to allow you to kind of choose what you're seeing on the front end. So, whether the shipping calculator is on the cart page or not, right? If you've got free shipping, for example, there's no reason for that to show up. However, if you've got paid shipping, that is kind of a big deal. You can hide shipping costs until address is entered. That's typically a good idea if you're doing variable shipping, but if the entire United States is the same, you can uncheck that. Do you want the shipping destination to default to the billing address? Do you want it to default to the shipping address? Or do you want it to force the customer to use the billing address? I would recommend default to billing address and allow them to change that. That's typically the best move. And then debug mode and leave that off. Just click save and shipping classes and we're done with shipping. So with shipping classes, this is basically how you can kind of do some variable shipping methods. This is an entirely different video video for me to go through this entire process. I'm still learning this. We're setting this up on a store that I have right now, so I'm still learning this, but it allows you to add certain products to a shipping class and then ship that product differently. Let's say you wanted to have free shipping on all of your products, but just a few shipping classes can allow you to change that and make that happen, but I'm still learning and I don't want to tell you guys wrong. So that's what I know about it right now and little Google can typically get you far away on that. However, I might do a video on shipping classes later. If you guys want it, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, Moving on to checkout. The checkout process is a huge thing and you want to make sure it is as good as possible because most people will bounce on the checkout page. So, how do you do that? Well, one, enable coupons is probably a good idea. Most people, if they have a coupon, are going to want to use it. Right now, if you don't plan on using any coupons on your store ever over here, you can turn that off. But typically, on an online store, you're going to want to make some coupons, incentivize some checkouts with that. So, you're going to want to have to put that on. Enable guest checkout. Yes, you want to do that. That is a must, because if you don't, people are going to bounce. People don't want to create accounts. They just don't. So if they can check it as a guest, that's typically the best. Typically, for us, about 20% of people create an account, which is not a lot, but that's fine. Force secure SSL. You want to do this, right? You've got to have working SSL in order to actually sell stuff via WooCommerce. You can set up your store, but to actually sell stuff, you need working SSL, and force secure checkout is, uh, is going to make sure that is okay. Checkout pages, cart page. Boom, I would recommend adding a terms and conditions page and selecting that here. Check out endpoints, where you want to send people. Leave all of this the same. WooCommerce has created these pages, so just leave all of that the same. And then you can check out the order your payments are displayed here and uh, and drag those around. We're going to manage these here in a second to where it only says PayPal. But once you're done with that, you can save changes and we'll move on. So moving on here, I'm actually going to skip to PayPal, which is how most people are going to accept payments online. You can also use Stripe. I downloaded the WooCommerce Stripe plugin, but again, I'm going to do a separate video on that. However, 
with this you want to click enable PayPal you can leave that the same because it is PayPal and uh, you can say pay via PayPal and this is actually true you can pay with your credit card if you don't have a PayPal account that is also true so PayPal can work as a credit card processor if you don't have a PayPal account set up already you're gonna need to go do that and enter your PayPal uh, email address right there and then once you've done that you can enable sandbox mode if you're testing all that awesome stuff receiver email address if your main PayPal email address differs from this up here you want to enter that there if you want to use PayPal identity token you can do that but it's actually not required because of uh, how this basically is set up and uh, you don't actually have to enter API for PayPal unless you want to process refunds from WooCommerce through PayPal so uh, yeah overall enter your email there and you're you're done it's, it's working for PayPal. You also want to make sure you click enable. And there you go. It's that easy. Now, you also need to go through and disable all the other payment options you don't want. For example, most of us running an e-commerce store aren't going to be able to offer cash on delivery. That d doesn't make sense. I don't think UPS is going to be taking uh, cash like that for us. So, we want to make sure that isn't checked. Same thing with uh, BACs here and check payments. Now, we can jump on over to accounts. In the accounts tab, you're going to be managing the accounts your users might end up creating on the front end. Enable customer registration on checkout. I think that's a big thing. Enable that. Um, enable customer registration on the My Account page. Why not? I don't think that's going to hurt. Display returning customer login on the checkout page. Yes, you want to do that. Automatically generate username for the customer email from customer email. No reason you shouldn't do that. And I would not recommend generating customer password, even though it's going to make their account safer if you do that. I wouldn't because a lot of people just flip out if you, they don't know their password and they'll go in and change it anyway. So just let them create that. All of this can be left the same and save changes. There you go. It's that easy. Now on to emails and we're almost done people. I then want to show you guys how to add a product and then we'll be done. That's simple. Now, here in emails, these are the emails you can edit to send to your customer. As you can see, actually, these top three send to you, right? They do not send to your customer. These are going directly to your email address. The rest of these, however, are going to your customer. And you can just edit them very simply. Come over here to the configure button, the little settings scroll wheel over here. And then allows you to go in there and edit basically everything, right? You can change the subject, the email heading, you know, your order is complete, the email type, all of that awesome stuff. And it can be changed right there and uh yeah i mean that's that's pretty much it so let's jump over here to products and we're going to add a new product just very very quickly to show you guys exactly how that is set up once you're on the add product page which again we got to from products under woocommerce and then add new you can name your product we're just going to go this uh new product is what we'll call this this is going to be what i call the long description this is going to be located under your image and a short description with your price and the buy now button and all that stuff so let's just do long description and uh, i'm going to copy and paste this real quick just so you guys can get the effect give me a second all right that's done now we want to do the price and stuff here so if this is a virtual product right meaning you're not going to be shipping it you can click there and if it's downloadable you can click it there as well that allows you to add files do download limits if the download expires meaning if they buy it does it stop working in a year or two all things like that and uh that's that for download product that's basically kind of it you can go through here and, and add an sku whether it's in stock which if it's download product it should be unless it's going to be like a limited time only 200 available or something and then you can do linked products it's going to be upsells cross sells you probably want to use that if you uh if you can and then attributes no reason to add attributes to a downloadable product typically but that is that now Let's say it's not a virtual downloadable product. Well, let's go ahead and enter our price here for, let's say, $9.99. All right, and okay, this is so we want to make a sales price for $8.99, right? right? So it's typically, normally $9.99. We're going to do a sales price for $8.99. We're going to set that sale to run from February 1st through the 28th simple as that inventory i'm going to manage stock right so we had that earlier manage stock there's currently a hundred of these in stock like say we purchased 100 of this product and when we sell 100 we're sold out so we want to make sure that's uh taken care of individually sold can they buy more than one of this item typically you want to leave that on there are some individual specific cases where that's just not going to happen but typically you want to leave that on shipping how much does this weigh let's say it weighs we're in ounces here let's say it weighs three ounces dimension we'll just do three inches by four four inches by seven inches very weird dimensions shipping class we don't have any shipping classes set up currently linked products if you want to do upsells let's say we're going to go ahead and do an upsell of that test product we have over there boom we're going to do that attributes nothing you can do there if it's a simple product we're going to get into attributes here in a second no reason to use this right now though and then advanced settings if you want to do a purchase no menu order this is what 
order it's going to show up in WooCommerce. You can do that there. This is going to be the short description, so I'm going to do exactly what I did up there and copy paste this real quick. See you in a second. All right, that's copy and pasted, and uh, the only thing we need to do now is add images. So I'm going to go ahead and set product image. I'm just going to use an image I've already uploaded to the site here. Let's say this ebook, right? And then we're going to add product images. We can just use these chairs. Boom, add, and then let's go ahead and uh, publish this. So boom, there we go. And once you've published the product, you can go preview it, and that's what we're going to do. Now, it should show up right here on the product page as well. They're going to have two products right next to each other with the exact same image. Once this is done loading, there we go. It should show up here now. It's not. Why is it not? Give me a second. I'll see if I can't figure that out. I figured it out. It was a caching issue. I had to clear my caches and do all that stuff up here. So that's what that was. Caching issue solved. It's here. It's here. So as you can see, this product is on sale. It's typically $9.99. It's now $8.99. We can then click on it here and we'll be able to see all of the images that we have as well as short description, right? all of the images right there and then we've got the long description down here and additional information you're going to have the weight you entered as well as the dimensions of the product and then if someone wanted to leave a review they could do that there now as you can see we would probably want to remove this sidebar if we were actually going to use this as a WooCommerce site and things of that nature. But for now, this is it. You've kind of see how WooCommerce works. Got 100 in stock. As you can see, it's a member of both uncategorized and product categories. It's over here, right? This is where we added that. And uh, there you go. But if you've got any questions, please throw those in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to assist you in any way that I can. But you now have WooCommerce set up and running. You've added your first product. Go add some more. Have some fun. It's awesome. I, I love WooCommerce and it's an extremely powerful platform that uh, really takes things to the next level. So anyway, I'm Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you got any questions, post them in the comment section down below. Like this video and it is brought to you by Bluehost, an awesome WordPress web host that just takes things to the next level. Like I said, all my sites, even this one is hosted on Bluehost. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Nick, and I am out, guys. Peace.